Welcome to Hood War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing the war between MS-13 and 18th Street. 18th Street is a predominantly Hispanic American gang located in Los Angeles, California. They originated in the 1960s in the Pico Union District near 18th and Union Avenue. 18th Street was initially established because the gang known as Clan 14 only recruited and admitted Mexican Americans in their gang. Clan 14 selective membership led to the creation of the 18th Street Gang. 18th Street's territory historically is composed of five main neighborhoods in Los Angeles. Within each neighborhood, there are specific names to distinguish the different groups as well as cliques. Prospects are initiated into the gang by being beaten for 18 seconds or partaking in some type of illegal activity designated by a current member. The 18th Street Gang remains predominantly composed of men. The women who join the gang have three avenues to do so. An 18 second beating, sexual intercourse with multiple members, or being a girlfriend or wife of a member could potentially lead to membership over time. 18's reach has extended out of Los Angeles to cities and suburbs throughout the US. 18 has a presence in numerous states within the US, including Florida, New York, Hawaii, Pennsylvania. It is estimated that 18 has approximately 30 to 50,000 members in the US alone. Additionally, outside the US, 18th Street has a presence in El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Spain, and Mexico. Mata Salvatrucha, also known as MS-13, is a primarily Salvadorian gang, also located in Los Angeles, California. They originated in the 1980s, when Salvadorian refugees escaped the Civil War, settled in the Westlake, Pico Union, and Rampart districts just west of downtown Los Angeles. In these neighborhoods, which are among the poorest and most crowded in the city, the already established Mexican gangs will bully and extort the newly arrived Salvadorians. In order to protect themselves, Salvadorian teenagers who had a common interest in heavy metal music banded together into stoner groups. In time, the groups coalesced into a single gang, Mata Salvatrucha. Over time, MS-13 members got involved into drug dealing and turned violence into their specialty. Many of the MS members were teenage veterans of the Civil War and were already hardened and battle-tested. The myth that they were worshippers of Satan made them even more intimidating. They are estimated to have at least 10,000 members in the US, with the majority of them being in Los Angeles, Long Island, New York, and the DMV. An anti-gang crackdown in the late 1990s saw hundreds of early members deported back to Central America, where they established offshoots. They are now estimated to have at least 60,000 MS-13 members in Central America. In the beginning, MS-13 and 18th Street were relatively cool with each other. In the 80s, allegedly an MS-13 member named Shaggy got into a physical altercation with an 18th Streeter at a party, allegedly over a female. The 18th Streeter went and got a Uzi and allegedly ended up killing Shaggy. They have been at war ever since. In April of 2013, MS-13 operated at least six casitas in Los Angeles, four of which were located in the Pico Union District. A casita, which means little house in Spanish, is an apartment or house used to illicit drug and alcohol sales, gambling, and sex work. Gang members, as well as other persons, patronize the casitas, which provide a place to socialize and relax. Women may work in the casitas as either hostess or pros. Hostess are paid for sitting and drinking with the male patrons. Women may also assist with narcotic sales. Ricky, who went by the name Directo, was responsible for operating these casitas. He was assisted by Jose and Edward, who were also from MS. In December of 2012, Gabriela met Diego at school and they became romantically involved. Diego, also known as Ryder, was from MS as well. Through her association with Diego, Gabriela began visiting the casitas and regularly used drugs there. She dropped out of school and in March 13th, began living at the 21st Street Casita, along with Rick, a woman named Wendy, and Anna. She assisted with drug sales and was paid to sit and drink with the male patrons. Gabriella had relatives and friends who were members of the 18th Street Gang who was a rival to MS. Gabriella sent and received text messages on her cell phone and could access the Facebook application on it. Her phone was not password protected. Some of her text messages and Facebook information indicated her connection to 18th Street members. When Gabriella was at the casita, Diego and Wendy usually took her phone away from her and other persons in the casita will use it to receive calls and texts. Gabriella was worried that MS-13 members would discover her ties to 18th Street and harm her. She spoke to Diego about this and he told her not to worry. In April of 2013, Gabriella stopped dating Diego. 
At some point, she had a sexual encounter with Jose. On April 22nd, Rick asked Gabrielle to work at the casita as a pro. She declined, and he became angry with her. The next day at around 1 a.m., Rick told Gabrielle and Anna that they could no longer live at the casita and had to leave. With nowhere to go, they borrowed money and stayed the night at the East West Hotel, which was less than two blocks away from the Fedora Casita. Later that morning, Gabriella and Anna returned to the Fedora Casita, where they hoped a friend of Anna's would loan them some money. Ruben was there when they arrived. Rick, Edward, and Jose arrived shortly after, but did not speak to the women. Unable to borrow the money, Gabriella and Anna decided to leave. As they were exiting, Jose made a hand gesture to Gabriella, which in hindsight, she believed was a warning. Sometime that afternoon, the women walked back to the East West Hotel. As the women walked toward the corner of 8th Street, Edward approached while Jose was on the opposite corner. Edward told Gabriella that she needed to come with him to a meeting. She initially refused, asking why she had to attend if she was not a gang member. Anna, concerned that something was not right, attempted to get Edward to postpone the meeting or allow her to come with Gabriella, but he refused. Gabriella agreed to go with Edward after he assured her that her current boyfriend would be there. Anna took Gabriella's phone, agreeing to call her family if something happened. Edward and Gabriella walked towards San Marino Street. Jose and Ruben walked parallel to them on the opposite side of the street. After walking for two blocks, Edward stopped, pulled out a small silver gun, and told her she could leave. He then said, Fake teen, Mata Rose here, then shot her in the chest from about two and a half feet. Gabriella attempted to run but fell in the street. Jose then stood over, waved the gun side to side, and laughed. All three men then fled the scene. When police arrived, they found Gabriella lying face down in the street. She had suffered multiple gunshot wounds, but was conscious and pleading for help. She had trouble breathing and enunciated her words, but tried to tell the officer that Nino from Normandy shot her. Gabriella underwent surgery and remained in a coma. She had suffered 13 gunshot wounds to her chest, back, neck, and leg. One of the bullets missed her heart by a millimeter. Edward, Jose, and Ruben from MS were convicted of attempted murder. They were each sentenced to 25 years to life. Some of MS-13's primary activities include extortion, murder, robbery, and drug sales. Part of the profits that the gang obtains through its illegal activities are paid as a tax to the Mexican Mafia. In turn, MS-13 extorts a tax from street vendors who operate within the gang's territory. Those who refuse to pay risk having their business destroyed or being beaten or killed. MS-13 members who fail to put in work for the gang must also pay a tax. Angel joined the MS gang when he was 13 or 14 years old. In 2010, Angel decided to leave the gang and move out of the neighborhood. Around January 2012, he returned and moved back in with his parents. About three weeks after Angel returned to his neighborhood, Ronald and another man approached him on the street and asked him to identify his gang. Ronald asked for Angel's number and told him the boss would be contacting him. Oscar, who was a shot caller, called Angel and said that they would see each other soon and talk about the clique. About two weeks later, Oscar and Jonathan met with Angel at his apartment building and told him he had to put in work for the clique or pay the 20 to 40 dollar weekly tax fee that was imposed on inactive members. Jonathan told Angel they would check him if he didn't pay. Angel understood this to mean that he or his parents would be harmed if they failed to comply. Angel gave Oscar $40. Oscar told Angel that they would see each other again soon. About a week later, Oscar called Angel and said that he was outside of his apartment building. Angel went outside and gave Oscar $40. Before Oscar drove away, he told Angel that they would see each other again soon. Around a week later, Oscar and Jonathan came to Angel's apartment. Oscar told Angel he was in a hurry and needed money for the click. Angel took $40 out of his pocket and Jonathan approached him and snatched the cash. A week or so later, Omar and Ronald returned to Angel's apartment. Omar told Angel that Oscar wanted at least $80. Angel said that he didn't have the money. Omar replied that they were fed up with Angel and hit him in the head with a pistol. Ronald told Angel that he would face the consequences if he did not pay when he returned. Later that day, Angel sold his computer for $150. The next day, Omar and Ronald returned to Angel's apartment and he gave them the $150. After they asked for some money again, Angel finally decided to call the police. After he was interviewed, he agreed to work as an informant. On May 3rd, Angel planned to meet Castro at an intersection. 
LAPD Gang Task Force equipped Angel with a body camera and recording device and gave him $100 in cash for the extortion payment. On June 20th, 2012, Daniel and Miguel, pulled from MS, were walking on the 1500 block of South 6th Avenue. A rival gang member spotted them walking from across the street. The rival stared Daniel and Miguel down as they began to cross the street. They never made it because the rival stepped into the street, took a couple seconds to get a good aim, and opened fire. The MS members were not armed and tried to flee. The rival kept shooting until he ran out of bullets. The rival stood over one of the men as the man lay dying in the street and cursed him for belonging to MS. He proclaimed that he would have shot him in the face if he had another round. Both Miguel and Daniel died at the scene. The following day, after the double homicide, Oscar demanded money from Angel to pay for funeral expenses. On June 27th, an 18th Street member shot at Ronald's car, leaving it riddled with bullets. On July 4th, Castro ordered Angel to kill a member of 18th Street and arranged to meet with Angel to show him a photograph of the target. Angel relayed this to Officer Guerrero and Castro was arrested that same night. The next day, Oscar and Castro each called Angel and accused him of being a rat. Angel was relocated after it was discovered that a green light had been issued against him. Oscar, Jonathan, Omar, and Ronald were all convicted on seven counts in conspiracy to commit extortion. They were sentenced to 49 and 42 years to life. On September 21st, 2014 at around 1 a.m., Brian, who was from 18, was waiting at a bus stop at the intersection of Wilshire and Western. A dark colored pickup truck stopped at a red light by the bus stop. Brian and some young guys that were in the truck exchanged gang signs. Brian then raised his middle finger up in a disrespectful manner. The truck then took off and turned around a corner. Brian said to the person that was seated next to him, man, something about to pop off. Two men then walked to the bus stop from the direction of the truck. Brian then said, everything good, fool? One of the men then produced a gun, racked it, and fired numerous shots at Brian, who was backing up from approximately eight feet away. Brian fell on top of a woman who was selling tamales, and they both landed on the ground. The two males then ran northbound on Western to where the pickup truck was stopped just before 6th Street. Brian suffered gunshot wounds to his head and back and died at the scene. Christian from MS was convicted of second degree murder. He was sentenced to 15 years to life. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.